Okay, this is the interior plumbing and appliance video. Kind of two birds of one stone. This is the parent bedroom, parent suite. This is the pass-through fireplace. Uh, none, uh, neither one of the fireplaces have glass fronts. They all have spark arresters. Uh, this one has a gas tube. The other one has gas logs. This one doesn't have a key. The other one does have a key that works on either one of them. Um, the tube coming into the, through the firewall, it should have been sealed. Um, it also manufacturer specification supersedes code. This is a manufactured fireplace. I don't have the instructions. The both of the fireplaces draw their air, their combustible air. Uh, their, the combustion air is drawn from the living space. This is the parent bathroom. These windows are not um, tempered safety glass. And at least these windows here should have been tempered safety glass. And this electric receptacle outlet should have been GFCI. This one over here is GFCI. We've got a light switch around here. See this orientation? This is the light. This is the fan. The fans are venting directly into the attic. The shower door does not have a gasket underneath it. And we've got some cracked curbs. You can see where I had some water in here. I was filling it up. Also, the control handle, a little loose. Cold's on the right, hot's on the left. Uh, this plumbing's pretty boring. Boring is good. I still have to see those lights work. So anyway, but just uh, just under here, just to let you know, everything looks you know pretty much like it should. Underneath this one over here, the floor of the cabinet. Okay, we can see that we've got a little bit of you know moisture issues in here. I guess I could have my flashlight ready. I could have done that, right? Uh, maybe it's too bright. We got a little bit of, you know, it's, it's had water issues underneath here. That's where the plumbing is. That's where the plumbing is. But the plumbing looks boring. <clears throat> the bathtub. The only thing I can say is the hot and cold buttons are missing. The orientation is correct, but they're not labeled. Uh, the drain stopper is loose, so I had to take it out to drain it because I had put water in the bathtub like I had in the shower. Uh, again. There's some more lights. There we go. There's our, all of our luminaries. There's all of our luminaries. <clears throat> so this door does not have to be a privacy door. It doesn't have to have a latch on it. So long as... This door obviously has a latch on its exterior. This door should have a pri and it does. So this door has a privacy latch. This door has a privacy latch. So the whole bedroom suite, the whole parent bedroom suite is has got, you know, consideration for privacy. And since we're here, you know, this door doesn't latch. This is the hall bathroom. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. The GFCI does work. Uh, one of our luminaries is not burning. Uh, and again, it's boring underneath here. An interesting thing, remember when I was showing you the switches? So we come in here and the light switch is on the right. This one should be closer to the door. And then the fan switch is on the left. And again, these fans vent directly into the attic. They should vent directly to the exterior. All, both commodes are flushing, both bathtubs are pouring, both bathtubs are draining. I'm trying to make things leak here. The plumbing underneath there, you know, so far, but we're not through yet. So far the plumbing is uh, pretty boring, pretty standard stuff. But we're gonna keep at it. We're gonna keep at it. I don't think there's a half, no. Always looking, always looking. There's a quite a bit of house here for a flat. So 
So I kind of expect to see another half bath, but, but I don't. This is the wet bar. The wet bar is not GFCI protected. My battery's charged though. That's a good thing. My battery's charged. Hope I don't lose that. The sink. We don't have a luminary in the wet bar. Is that true? Alright, we got a luminary. I don't know what that goes to. Huh. So it's, it's only cold water. I'm listening. It's echoing through the house. Guilty conscience and everything. So come along here. Underneath here, it's not boring. What we got? Well, we've got cold water. And then this looks like we've got some kind of. What is this? Some kind of a feed to a, kind of, some kind of a drain system. This was a supply to an ice maker, maybe? You had an ice maker in here or something? Um, all these screws, somebody's been going, you know, something's been going on here that I just don't, I don't wholly understand. And that's an unconventional installation, original receipt, standard platinum, okay, that's the card, subtotal. Doesn't say what the receipt doesn't say what it was for. Or even if it was for this, we got, of course, some water damage on the floor underneath there. We're kind of seeing, but you, you really want to find out what's going on here. Because whatever is going on here is unconventional. It's, this is not a, a conventional application. It looks like a drain line over there. And it looks like a water supply. We got cross-contamination. What do we got? We don't know. We don't know what we have. That's just a weird thing. And then coming into the laundry, the laundry is not GFCI protected. <clears throat> the handles should be labeled hot and cold, and they're not. You know, it's just cold and cold. And uh, this should be GFCI as well. The clothes dryer is uh, is a three prong, one ten. I'm not seeing a gas connection in there, am I? I'm not seeing a gas connection. And then this vent, you don't see that. You'll see it on the outside. Video, you've already seen it in the exterior. But this vent needs to be cleaned, it's dirty, and the hood is missing, and the flap is missing. So we've got that going on. Okay, bathrooms are not required to have vent fans, and this one doesn't have one. And if it, I mean, excuse me, laundries, excuse me, laundries are not required to have vent fans, and this laundry does not have one. That said, if a bathroom has a window or a laundry, a window then a vent fan is not required so there's that as well something to kind of know uh, moving on along we're in our kitchen and I don't know if the laundry equipment conveys or not I took pictures of the data plates I don't know if the refrigerator conveys or not I took a picture of the data plate let's just entertain the idea for a moment that the refrigerator does convey well, it does not have an ice maker connection on the wall behind it. I would have written that up anyway, regardless. But this is a piece of equipment just like an air conditioner. So it needs to be serviced. So if this conveys, the filters need to be changed, however many filters you have, water filters. The coils need to be cleaned. It needs to be serviced so that it goes the note, so that it goes the way. You know, so uh, routine, maintenance, recommended for the dishwasher on the um, kitchen sink here okay this is called a foul line f-o-u-l that's how we hillbillies say it foul line f-o-u-l though all right it's supposed to cascade down like this this is where all the germs and the bacteria and the virus inside the cooties too and stuff everybody says well just put some bleach under there and i guess you can i guess you can just stick some bleach under there and clean it you know um I hate discounting my work. I really do. I hate discounting my work. That's kind of loose. But at the same time, I've yet to have a client call me up and say, hey, bud, thanks for that foul line. Good catch, man. Good catch. Glad you got that. You know, maybe they did. And I would never dissuade my client from seeking perfection. But I just, you know, I don't know if that's the hill that most people choose to die on. Uh, just for comparative reasons. The food waste disposal does not have a drain stopper. We do have a kitchen stopper and strainer. Okay. 
And while we're here, okay, this house was treated for subterranean termites no fewer than three times. In 98, they came back in 99, and then they came back in, what's the date on this? 01, and they came back with Termidor. Termidor is the bomb. This is me. Hello, thank you very much for your business, by the way. That's, that was before me. Uh, this is a three-quarters horsepower food waste disposal. I've been running it. There's paper underneath all the plumbing. Good move, good move, but I haven't found any leaks. But this cord right here, this cord right here, so the way it goes in the motor case, it should have a clamp on it. It should have a clamp on it. And this is the drain line for the food waste, for the um, dishwasher. And the drain line does not have an anti-siphon loop on it. And the dishwasher is not mounted very securely into the cabinet. See that? It kind of is what it is. I'm still letting it run. Uh, I didn't see anything else unusual. If this home was built this morning, and of course it wasn't, the food waste disposal and the dishwasher would be GFCI protected. And of course it wasn't built this morning, and they're not. So there's that. My phone is just ringing. What's going on here? I don't know, man. Looks like spam to me. This oven has had three minutes. It's been on 101 since I got here. So we got here the oven, electric oven, the timer does not work, which means that the self-cleaner will not work, but I don't inspect self-cleaners. I did inspect for bake, I did inspect for boil. I did those things. Comes on, the light comes on. It's actually kind of clean. The microwave doesn't work, but this microwave isn't part of the house. It's kind of like the refrigerator and the laundry equipment. This is a countertop, this is a cabinet model. It just sits up here and looks pretty. All right, maybe you can plug it in and it'll come on. I'm not, I'm not gonna dig that guy, big bad boy out and reach around and do something stupid, do no harm. I'm just not gonna do that. Then over here we have a flat cooktop. We do, and let's see if I can get a picture of this as well we're at it. They're right in here. Come on, stay with me. Right in there, the conduit is loose, right there. The conduit's loose where it, it, it connects to that junction box. It's not real loose, but it's loose. And then this vent hood, I was really excited to see it because one, it's high enough. It's a shame we got a um, fluorescent bulb there, so we need a protective lens for that. That would be better. Okay, so, and this is kind of a neat feature. It's got a, a, a fan baffle, so it equalizes the, the pressure when the fan's on, so it doesn't draw up from your fireplace. I didn't understand what I was looking at in the attic. I kind of had an idea what was going on. I don't have an idea how to put this drawer back. I've done it before. We're almost through, so let's just leave it there. But once we get into the attic, it's no longer it's that nice, beautiful metallic tape. It's cloth tape. It's cloth tape in the attic. So that that should be done. And again, the fan comes on. Protective fuser. When this home was built, when I was a little bitty baby in the builder's belly, all these receptacles, okay, were built out because they knew that they were going to come out here with sheetrock. Okay, all these receptacles were built out so that when we installed all the rock and everything, they, everything is nice and flush to the wall. But then we came in here and we added this wainscoting. Did I pronounce that right? And this wainscoting. Okay. That's okay. That is okay. Thought I was onto something, and I was. I was. I am. Over here, when we put the splash back later, 
they knew the wainscoting was coming in. That was all part of the grand design. And so we can see that we made provisions for that so that it looks just like the others. But then we've come in since then and we've added this beautiful splashback. It's attractive. I like it. But we come in here and now the receptacle no longer fits the box, no longer fits flush. See that? See all those gaps? That's fire blocking. All right, so the fire blocking has been, and I think I heard a code inspector call it a um, spark res a resistor. I always call them, I always thought they were called extenders, and other people call them goof rings. And they cost about, I got a link in my, in your report, there's a link, of, uh, I think it's Pretty Handy Girl. She shows you how to do it, and they cost about two bucks. I think when she made the video, I'm sure they've gone up. Nine, ten. You know, you're not going to get away for ten dollars. They raise the rates. They're going to charge you sales tax. That's how they get you. But for like twenty bucks, it could have the kitchen could have been done right. That's the point. That's the point. And uh, then all of these come on. They burn rice and hot. I've been playing with them. Like I said, bacon broil works. Microwave doesn't work. Make a liar out of me. There you go. See. And I and I cycled them down. I cycled them down. I didn't turn them on hot. And then rotated them down, and that's what I did. And that's basically it. That's all the that's the plumbing. Uh, that's the appliances. This is the fireplaces. Oh, did I spend any time on this fireplace? I don't think I did. I don't think I did. I know I didn't. See abandonment issues. Okay. So we come in here. It's like the other fireplace. Got pictures and stuff. What concerns me about this fireplace is gas logs. And these gas logs are designed to fit together, and obviously they're not. And they're designed to fit together in such a fashion, and that makes them correct. Because a gas log, this one does not have a, a stopper on it, so if you can close the damper 100%. It doesn't make, you can close a natural burning fireplace damper, because if you don't open it, your house will fill up with smoke. This won't fill up with smoke. It'll be carbon monoxide and kill you. But just because it doesn't create smoke doesn't mean it won't create soot. You can see soot in there. And if these logs are not positioned properly, what will happen, what has happened to a friend of mine, he thought he was going to be smart, but he's going to get some more romance, going to change things up a little bit, you know, whatever. And then he ended up painting his house because the soot off gas and it stained all the paint. So... The damper needs a clip on it for carbon monoxide and safety issues. But the gas logs need to be positioned because of off-gassing soot. Soot might not necessarily go take, might not know, go up the chimney. It didn't go up my friend's chimney. I don't know the whole story. I just know that he got to paint his living room. His wife was happy. She got a new paint out of the job. But she didn't let him know it. She didn't let him know. You'd think she was mad.